We remember King Henry VIII today for being a grotesque and obese king who would demonstrate his ruthlessness, sending many people to their deaths across his kingdom. He would even condemn two of his own wives and his closest friends, such as Thomas Cromwell. But Henry VIII would not always be that way. As he was a child and a young prince, he was considered the spare to his father's throne, as his elder brother was considered the heir, Arthur. But Henry was also said to have been a rather handsome prince, and a prince who was well-natured and heir. But Henry VIII began his reign, which he probably never expected he would, and his brother was the great hope for the Tudor dynasty. He would become a huge favourite of the people. He was described in reports as the handsomest prince in the Christendom, which was, of course, a long departure from where he would end up in his life, and he would be known for his tall stature, strong build, and also extremely sporty lifestyle. The king regularly played tennis and involved himself in horsemanship on the tilt yard, taking part in jousts, which were, of course, rather dangerous. But at the start of his reign, there was a great hope and a huge amount of expectation. Henry would win over the people by arresting and then executing two of his father's biggest allies. But these men were hated across England. Sir Richard Epsom and Edmund Dudley were seen as Henry VII's tax collectors. And they had raised taxes which made people suffer all across England as they were led to Tower Hill for their executions. Upon the insistence of the new king, Henry VIII, people across England rejoiced and they were looking forwards to the new king's methods. But it would also show people how ruthless Henry VIII could be, and how his reign would be dominated by bloodshed. He was establishing his power, and he wanted to make the English monarchy a jewel in the eye of Europe, and make sure it was well respected, and was known for its culture and traditions. It was Henry VIII who would refer to himself as Majesty, from the word majestic, and this word is obviously still used today to refer to a king or queen, but he would begin his reign by renovating palaces and building them, and spending lavishly the rich funds built up by his father during his reign. He would also then marry his brother's widow, Catherine of Aragon, which was popular across the country, and the king and queen were cheered whenever they went. But Catherine would fall in love with Henry, the handsome and strong prince who treated her well, and Henry was very romantic towards her, and he would ride using her colours in jousts, and he wrote his wife love songs, and the pair would prank each other and dance. It seemed like a great positive marriage and a start to Henry's reign. It was said by an Italian ambassador that His Majesty is the handsomest potanet I have ever set eyes on. Above the usual height, with an extremely fine calf to his leg, his complexion very fair and bright, with auburn hair combed straight and short, in the French fashion, and a round face so very beautiful that it would become a pretty woman. His throat being rather long and thick, he was born on the 28th of June, 1491, so he will enter his 25th year the month after next. He speaks French, English and Latin, and a little Italian, plays well on the lute and harpsichord, sings from book at sight, draws the bow with greater strength than any man in England, and jousts marvellously. Believe me, he is in every respect a most accomplished prince." Henry, though, would not be too interested in politics of admin work, and he would let his ministers get on with this, and he would then sign papers when he needed to for these. Henry hated doing certain duties, which he was faced to do as king, and he believed this got in the way of his time to have fun and play sport. It was then said by the same ambassadors four years later of the king that His Majesty is twenty-nine years old, and extremely handsome, nature could not have done more for him. He is much more handsomer than any other sovereign in Christendom, a great deal handsomer than the King of France, very fair, and his whole frame admirably proportioned. On hearing that Francis I wore a beard, he allowed his own to grow, and, as it is reddish, he has now a beard that looks like gold. 
He's very accomplished, a good musician, composes well, is a most capital horseman, a fine jouster, speaks good French, Latin and Spanish, is very religious, hears three masses daily when he hunts, and sometimes five on other days. He hears the office every day in the Queen's chamber, that is to say, Vespers and Compline. He is very fond of hunting, and never takes his diversions without tiring eight or ten horses, which he causes to be stationed beforehand along the lines of the country he means to take, and when one is tired, he mounts another, and before he gets home, they are all exhausted. He is extremely fond of tennis, at which game it is the prettiest thing in the world to see him play, his fair skin glowing through a shirt of finest texture. He gambles with the French hostages, to the amount occasionally, it is said, of from 6,000 to 8,000 cats in a day. But Henry always won the sports he was playing, and he was one of the best athletes and sportsmen across England. He would shockingly lose a wrestling match with the French king, which offended him. But the king was also an intellectual. He loved music and to speak many languages, and often spoke long into the night with people about his love for maths and astronomy. He also indulged in religious writings and crafted the defence of the church in the response to the attack by Martin Luther on it, and this earned him the title of the Defender of the Faith, bestowed upon him by the Pope. With all this, Henry VIII was winning many plaudits across his own country and also Europe, and one ambassador communicated this saying, in the eighth Henry such beauty of mind and body is combined as to surprise and astonish, grand stature suited to his exalted position, showing the superiority of mind and character, a face like an angel's, so fair it is, his head bold like Caesar's, and he wears a beard, which is not the English custom, he is accomplished in every manly exercise, sits his horse well, tilts with his lance, throws the quoit, shoots with his bow excellently well, he is a fine tennis player, and he practices all of these gifts with the greatest industry. Such a prince could not fail to have cultivated all his character and his intellect. He has been a student from his childhood, he knows literature, philosophy and theology, speaks and writes Spanish, French and Italian, besides Latin and English. He is kind, gracious, courteous, liberal, especially to men of learning, whom he is always ready to help. He appears religious also, generally hears two masses a day, and on holy days, high mass besides. He is very charitable, giving away 10,000 gold ducats annually among orphans, widows and cripples. But obviously, everything would go wrong. For the first few years of his reign, everything was going well and swimmingly and the king was charming everyone in his country and abroad. He was winning fans in the papacy and the church, but then as time went on, Henry would change, and he would not be so keen to please everyone. His life would become dominated with this quest for a male heir, which would lead him down a dark trail of divorce, religious turmoil, execution and tragedy. He would also, towards the end of his life, suffer with many physical problems, including gout, and he became so large due to the lack of mobility and severe overeating that he had to be carried around all day, and his weight ballooned heavily. The king, it's believed, weighed around 400 pounds at his heaviest, and this was a long departure from the fit and healthy king who would school everyone in tennis, archery and other sports. But the king's nasty side would forever be ready to turn and many historians believe that his jousting accident in 1536 caused this, and that he suffered a brain injury that turned him into a tyrannical ruler who would not be afraid to order executions or let anything get in his way. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.